Hey, so. hey, you really didn't have a choice in the beginning, though, did you? Huh? Your mom and dad didn't ask you before you were born. I think it's just wonderful to know Jesus. I think it's wonderful that we have a church like this come to. Just come in and love one another and love God and with all of our heart and just praise Him and worship Him and go home feeling full inside and feeling that we can face the next week and things are going to be different. If things have been going backwards, thank God, let's go forward. Can you say amen to that? Things haven't been going well for you. They will become well. Hallelujah, because God's going to take care of you. Last Sunday morning, I talked a little bit on the subject of, of the key to the treasure house of God. And I said, I might continue it. And, and I don't know that I will, but I may somewhere in here get into that if I won't. But well, I will some other time. But like I told you, I left all my notes at home, so I just have to, you know, ad lib it. I don't have any. I got it down here, and I got it in here, and we're going to have a good meeting. Everybody say we're going to have a good meeting. We're already having a good meeting. I'm having a good time. I've enjoyed that this morning. I think it was just exceptional. You know, sometimes you just feel like it was exceptional. Maybe it was just that way to me, but I thought it was exceptional singing and worship. Uh, turn with me, if you will, please. And let's go to uh, let's go to Ephesians first, uh, verse uh, chapter three. I read this to you last Sunday morning, but I'm going to read it again this morning because it's uh, along the line I'm going to talk about. And uh, I'm believing God for for real real outpouring of His Spirit here this morning. I'm believing God that He's going to give you something that you can walk away with knowing that it's been good to have been in the house of the Lord. I'm going to say this today. I dare you to believe God. Turn to your neighbor and say, I dare you to believe God. And say it like you mean it. Come on, just don't do it. Don't just ad lib. Just, just really say it. Say, I dare you to believe God. Put some expression in it. I am. I'm looking out here. I dare you to believe God. I dare you to believe God. All right? Look at Ephesians chapter 4. We ought to be really thankful. You know, I said we really ought to be thankful for what God does in our life and, and what He's doing, what He's promised to do, because He's done so much already for us. He's, God has done so much for us, hasn't He? He's blessed us so much. He, he really has. You may say, well, Pastor, I've really had a lot of problems and a lot of difficulties. You may have, but God's blessed you. Look where you are today and look where you used to be. Hey, look where you used to be and look where you are today. Isn't that something to praise God for? Amen? I heard a song the other day, and in that song, and I wrote it down, uh, here's what I wrote down. Grace will be greater than sin. Calvary has proven that again and again. Uh, that's, a that's a message in itself. Can I give you that again? Grace will be greater than sin. Calvary has proven that again and again. Can I say it again to you? Because I, maybe you want to make a note of it because I think it's good. Grace will be greater than sin. Calvary has proven that again and again. When you make a mistake, thank God I want you to know that grace is there. Grace is there. When you make a mistake, I mean it. When you make a fall, grace is there. Always remember that. Grace is there. I dare you to believe God. I dare you to believe God. I dare you to believe God for great and marvelous things to come. Ephesians chapter 4, I read it to you last Sunday. I'm going to read it to you again, again this morning. Verse, verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 20. Are you there? Say yes. All right. Here's what it says, and you could quote it by memory, and so could I. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Now, I want you to notice this. Now, unto him, who's it talking about? Who's it talking about? Unto him, who's the him? All right, say it out loud, I can't hear you. Jesus, all right, Jesus. Now, unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power. Now, notice this. According to the power that works where? In us. Hey, God is not limited unless we limit him. Can I say that again? God is not limited unless we limit him. How do we limit him? Our unbelief. Everybody say unbelief. 
Now let's look over at Hebrews, not far from Ephesians. Hebrews, and let's go to chapter 11. My favorite chapter, one of my favorite chapters. Chapter 11 of Hebrews, called the faith chapter, but this book's full of faith, full of faith. But I want you to look at, I want you to look at verse 6. I read this to you last Sunday morning too, I believe. Are you there? Say yes. All right, Hebrews 11, verse 6. But what, without faith, you can quote it, so could I. Without faith, it's what? Impossible. Say it again. Impossible to believe God. Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Not only believe Him, please Him. Say please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. I dare you to believe God. I want you to go with me now to First Chronicles. This will get you. See if you can find it. First Chronicles. Old Testament. First, second Kings, and then Chronicles. I'll wait till you get there. Might take you a little while to get there. It's right after Second Kings. Are you there? When you get there, say yes. Because I want everybody to be there before I read this verse. Oh, I felt the anointing of God while we sang a while ago and worshiped God. That anoint you know what? There's nothing like the anointing of the Lord. You can't buy it. You can't buy it anywhere. You can't buy it. I said you can't buy it. The price is high. Jesus Christ bled at Calvary, laid down his life that we may be anointed with the Holy Spirit. He gave his life so we could be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Can you say amen? He gave his life so we could be baptized in the Holy Ghost. As long as Jesus was around, hey, he wasn't going to send the Holy Spirit. But when he left here, he sent the Holy Spirit to come into our lives. And that's where he is, right here, inside of us. Thank God. It's an inside job. Tell somebody near you it's an inside job. Hey, it's all about the Holy Spirit. That's why I say I dare you to believe God. If you dare to believe God, there are miracles that can happen in your life. I mean that with all of my heart. I believe in the miracle working power of Jesus Christ. Now I'm going to read about some. How many, how many of you got First Chronicles? Have you got there? If you got there, say yes. Anybody hasn't got there yet? Are you still looking for it? I mean, I, listen, it isn't, this is, are you still looking for it? It's right after, have you found it? How many of you found it? Raise your hand. All right, all of you. Sec, after Second Chronicles, I mean, after Second Kings, and here we are at First Chronicles. Now, this is a book, the First Chronicles and Second Chronicles. That's what it is. It chronicles things. It takes, it takes a man and his name and his posterity. It goes into detail on all of these things. And you don't read it if you want to be comforted. It just isn't something you read in First Chronicles. You just don't do it. But there's just one little part of First Chronicles that I want you to see. And, and some of you may already know where I'm going, and you may not know. But I want you to look at verse 9. You're in First Chronicles, and I want you to look at verse 9. Huh? Yeah, some of you already got it. Some of you already got it. First Chronicles, verse nine, and I'm t I'm I'm going to I'm talking to you about daring you to believe. Now, I I really feel good about this in my spirit. I really do. I feel like every one of you, if you'll just open the ears of your heart, open your heart and receive this morning. I believe God will give you something, and you'll walk out of here. You won't walk out of here like you came in here. You came in here looking good. You came in here praising the Lord. You came in here ready for church. But when you go out of here, you're going to go out of here with something. Say, hey, my life is going to change. I mean, it's going to change for big time. I mean, God's going to do some great things for me because there's nothing that God cannot do but fail. Say, God can't fail. Now, he can't lie either, but yeah, God can't fail and he can't lie. How many of you know if God said it, it's the truth? Say it with me. Say, God said it. Therefore, it's the truth. All right. Now, if I can stay up here, I'll talk to you. All right. I want you to look at it. And you, you, maybe some of you recognize it. Maybe you won't. 
But there, there is one, one man here that dared to believe God. Now, how many of you know that faith comes by hearing? Now, now listen to me. I'm going to wait until you get with me. I'm, I'm, I'm watching every one of you. I'm, I'm looking right at you. I'm going to wait until you get right with me. Are you there? Because, see, I'm challenging you. I'm giving you a challenge this morning that I'm daring you to believe God. You may say, Pastor, I'll tell you what, I've got some, I've got some big things. I, I've been carrying some big things with me. I, I need some great things to happen. Maybe some of you need a miracle. Is there anybody in here that needs a miracle? And then I'm going to ask, huh? You need a miracle. If you need a miracle, hey, I see some hands going up. All right, I do. I've got my hand up. All right. Now, how many of you are going to believe that God's going to give you that miracle? How many of you believe it? Now, some of you didn't do it either way, so I don't know where you are, but... You know what? If you believe it, the Bible said that if we ask, we shall receive. Is that in the Word? Is that really the Word? All right, if it is the Word, and if what we are asking is in the will of God, if it, it measures up with the Word of God, see, I'm not asking you for something silly out here. I'm, I'm asking you something that agrees with the Word of God. I mean, you can say that God can turn that wood into gold, and he could. But I don't think you've got the kind of faith to turn that into gold because I don't think God's going to do that. Could God do it? Sure he could. But what would be the purpose of it? God's saying the wood's good enough right now. <laughs> it holds up the roof, all right? But, but let's look at this now. Let's look at this man. I want you to look at one man here. And to me, First Chronicles, Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles, you get a little bit more out of it. But First Chronicles, it's nothing like I said. It just, it just, it just takes everybody and it goes all the way down. It names all these names, and man, you have to look look them up in Bible dictionary to even know how to pronounce them. You go all the way through that. Believe me, it's kind of boring. I've tried it. I've tried it. It's just kind of boring. All right, but here's one part that is not boy boring. Here's one part that'll leap off the page and grab you. I mean, it's one part that will build some faith inside of you if you want it to build faith inside of you. And that's why I've come this morning. I want you, there's one reason that I come every Sunday morning, and that is to worship God, of course. But I come to give you something that will build you up. I can't do it, but I know that God through me can give you something that will build your faith where you can walk out of here and say all things are possible to him that will believe. Can you say that with me? Say all things are possible to him that will believe. All right. All right, now here it is. And everybody should have brought their Bible. If you didn't bring your Bible, shame on you. Shame on you. All of you should always bring your Bible. You say, well, I have a problem with that. Well, if you have a problem with leaving your Bible at home, then please. How many of you got more than one Bible at home? Everybody in here has more Bible. You have more Bibles than probably need. Well, leave one at church in your seat, will you please? And then when you come here, you can say, I got my Bible, Pastor. All right. All right. So much. I'm not scolding you. All right. All right. Here we come. Verse 9. And Jabez. Everybody say Jabez. Ah, this is a guy we're going to talk about for a while. Jabez. And Jabez called on the God of Israel. Now, like I said, you can go through here and, and look at all those names down through there, and most of them you cannot even pronounce. It gets down here to the, to the, the fourth chapter, and it gets to the ninth verse, and it says, And Jabez, it seems that everything turns, and, and spotlight turns, and it's on one man. The spotlight turns on one man, and here's what it says. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren, and his mother called his name Jabez. Why did she call him Jabez? Because I bear him with sorrow. He's got sorrow. His name means, see, in the, in the Bible, when they, and I'm taking a little bit of time, but listen to me, please. In the Bible, in the Old Testament, and in the New Testament, they, they named their babies, and when they named them, it was special. It had a meaning attached to it. Every name had a meaning attached to it. And, and, and I could go through some, but, but I won't. I'll give you a couple. Moses, Moses, his name meant draw out. Draw out. Why did, his, why did they name him Moses? They named him Moses because 
Pharaoh's daughter went down to that, that water, remember, where his mother had hid him in a basket, and she found the baby and, and brought him up in Pharaoh's home. For 40 years he lived there. And his own mother nursed him, and they didn't know that she was his mother, but she took care of him as a nurse until he was 40 years old, living right there in Pharaoh's house. Can you imagine that? Turn to somebody and say, can you imagine that? But Moses' name meant to draw out. Joshua. Everybody say Joshua. Now I'm just choosing these. You know what? You know what his name meant? Joshua meant Savior. Everybody say Savior. Joshua, the meaning of Joshua is Savior. Isn't that something? And that's what he did, didn't he? He saved the children of Israel, in a way. You know, the, the, the water rolled back, and they went through. They marched through the water on dry ground as the priests went carrying the ark through the water. Wasn't that wonderful? But his name meant Savior. What, I'm just giving you a couple there. And, and each name had, had and it would be fun to you if you take your Bible dictionary and take out the names of people and look down through there and see what their name meant. We're at Jabez. Everybody say Jabez. Jabez's name meant sorrow. Sorrow. Trouble. That's all that he could remember. His name, he, he had been full of sorrow and trouble. His mother named him Jabez because she had trouble with him. She had sorrow over him. And as a result, he walked in life with this fear over him. He walked through life always afraid of what was going to come by next because he was full of sorrow. Everybody say sorrow. He had sorrow. He had trouble. He had tribulation. That's all he could think about in his life was that someday all I'm going to have is sorrow. All I'm going to have is tribulation. All I'm going to have is trouble. All I'm going, I'm going to be restricted all of my life. I'm going to be paralyzed by my name all of my, la my life because his name meant, meant sorrow. This is Jabez. All right? Jabez called on the... Notice this. Jabez called... On the God of Israel. Everybody say called on the God of Israel. Ooh, don't you feel that now? Now this man, he, I dare you. I said, I'm daring you to believe God. Here's a man. Now somebody had to testify to him. Somebody had to give him a word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now somebody, somebody had to hear he had to hear somebody come to him and they said to him, you don't have to live in sorrow. You don't have to live in sorrow. The God of Israel doesn't want you to live in sorrow. Well, turn to somebody and say, the God of Israel doesn't want you to live in sorrow. All right, so you know what? Somebody had to tell him, you don't have to live in sorrow. You don't have to dread tribulation and the troubles that, that you're going to go through and face in life. The God of Israel will take care of you. In other words, this, whoever it was that talked to him, and we don't have, it's silent. We don't know who talked to him about faith. We don't know who talked about him, talked to him about the God of Israel. But anyway, they said, Jabez called on the God of Israel. And here's what he said. I want you to hear his prayer. Because you see, as I said, First Chronicles, when you look through Chronicles, and you look at all these names and everything, it's just almost meaningless as you go down through the list. And believe me, I've tried it. It's not a lot of fun. But when I get to that 10th verse, Jabez called on the God of Israel. Here's what he said. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. Enlarge my coast, enlarge my territory, he sang. That thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. In other words, I don't want to be doing bad things. I don't want to be sinning against you. I don't want to grieve you, and I don't want to grieve myself. And God granted him that which he requested. And then you can skip on down to the next verse, and here we go again with all these lists of names of all of these people that you, can, you can't even pronounce, but each one of them has a meaning. But you know what? God did something for this man. He did something for Jabez because somebody witnessed to him, somebody told him that God loved him. All he had known all of his life was sorrow. He dreaded the tomorrow. He dreaded the future. 
There are a lot of people that, are, they, you know what, the future comes before they know it. The future comes and goes before they know it. One day just matches the other day. There are some people that are stuck in yesterday and looking yet to the future. But I'll tell you what, you can't be stuck in today and look for anything tomorrow. You've got to unstick yourself. Say that to somebody. You've got to unstick yourself. You've got to move out of that. You've got to move out of that place. You've got to move out of that trappings of today and say things are going to be different today. Things are going to be different today and my tomorrow is going to be better than my today will you say amen to that turn to somebody and say my tomorrow is going to be better than my today say it again say my tomorrow is going to be better than my today say it again say my tomorrow is going to be better than my today it's up to you say it's up to me Say, it's up to me. I'm daring you to believe God. I'm daring you. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm standing here. I'm daring you to believe in God. I'm daring you to say, my life's going to change. You may say, Pastor, I've been on the downhill. I mean, I haven't felt good. My, 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 my body, it just feels like it's falling apart. Things are not going well. My family, my family, there are people in my family, things are falling apart. I want to tell you something. You can put them back together. If they're falling apart, through the power of prayer, through your faith, in God. You can bring things back together. You say, I feel like my family's just falling apart. It's already fell apart. Uh, the pieces are everywhere. I can't put them back together. I want to tell you something. You can't put them back together. But I'll tell you somebody that can put the pieces of the puzzle of your family back together again and make it the family that it ought to be. Will you shout hallelujah? I'm happy about it today. I said I'm happy about it today. I said I'm happy about it today. God can put it back together because he's a God of miracles, of signs and of wonders. Ah, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. There is nothing impossible with God. He can do exceeding abundantly above all that I'm able to ask or think. He goes beyond what I can think. I can think big. I can think big, but God will always go bigger. God will always go bigger. He'll stretch you. You know what God wants to do to every one of us this morning? I, don't, I wish every one of you could feel what I'm feeling bubbling over inside of me. But you know what God wants every one of us to do? He wants us to stretch our faith, stretch our faith, Stretch our faith. Say, I'm not going to stay where I am. I'm going to walk with God, and things are going to be much better tomorrow than they are today. They're going to be much better next week than they were last week because I'm believing and trusting God. I dare you to believe God. I dare you to believe God. I dare you to believe what I'm talking about. I dare you to believe the Word of God. He said, call him to me. I give you this, I think. Maybe I give it to you every Sunday. I don't know, but at least once a month. Call unto me, and I will hear and answer you and show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. What does God ask of me? Call on me. Call on me. That's faith. When you call on God, when you say, oh, God. Hey, you, there may be times when you feel like your faith is low. That's why I want you to come every Sunday. If your faith is low, come in for a fill-up. Did you hear me? If your faith is low, come in for a fill-up. What do you do with your car when, it's, when the gas gauge says you're all empty? Right away, I want to turn into a service station. Do you? I don't like walking when I've got a car, and I want the car to be full of gas. And it's expensive today. But you know what? You may say, yeah, it takes just about everything I, 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 I earn, Pastor, to put food on the table and, and gas in the car. I'll tell you what, it can change. It can change. Are you listening? Anybody listening to me? I said, it can change. I said, it can change. I'm, 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 I'm looking at you. I'm saying it can change. It can change. How many of you will say it will change? Come on. How many of you will say it will change? What will change? What will change? Uh, what will change? My tomorrow will be better than my today. That's right. My tomorrow will be better than my today. It takes you. It takes you. I dare you to do it. Say, God, I'm going to believe you. You're going to turn things around for me. You may say, but Pastor, you don't know what happened to me. You don't know the sorrow I hold. You don't know what I went through, and I may not know. But God does, and he is touched. The Bible says he is touched by the feeling of our infirmity. When you are infirm, when you have a pain, when you have a pain in your spirit, in your soul, in your body, no matter where that pain is, God feels your pain. But he's waiting for you to call upon him before he can do anything because everything, God's a faith God. 
It was his idea. I said, God's a faith God. He did everything that way. You've heard me say this, but I like to say it anyway. He stepped out of nothing onto nothing, looked into nothing and said, let there be light. And I want you to know there was a banging sound. Uh, I told you last Sunday, I said, I mean, I believe in the big bang too. I believe in the big bang, the bang that God did. He stepped out there on nothing and spoke into nothing and said, let there be light. And I know there must have been some kind of explosion. Hallelujah. But light came because God spoke it into existence. That's the kind of God we have. I don't have one of those puny gods. I don't have one of those kind. I've got a big God. He's bigger than any problem that I can face. He's bigger than any problem you can face. No matter what you're facing today, I want you to know God is with you. He's right there with you. Have you turned your life over to God fully? Have you done that? If you haven't, you better do it before you walk out of here. Turn everything over to God. Say, God, I may not understand everything, but I'm turning everything over to you. And when you do that and mean it, say, God, I'm sorry. Everybody say this. Say, I'm sorry. See, I'm sorry for every sin I've committed. Now, now, if you've already prayed the prayer over all those sins, you've got to remember. God never remembers them anymore. Hey, did you hear me? He doesn't remember them anymore. No use you bring it up to him if you've already asked him to forgive you. Hey, you don't need to do it twice. You don't do it once. I'm, I'm sorry, God, for what I did. You know what he does? He takes his heavenly eraser, and just like that, he looks at your record and says it's clean. Because when he looks at your record, he looks at it through the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. You know, I got that revelation one time. I mean, it really opened my eyes. It opened my heart. I got the revelation of any time that God looks, God the Father looks at me. He looks at me through the blood of his son. And he sees that reflection of himself. I've never gotten away from that. I thought, isn't that wonderful? When I look at you, I don't look at what you used to be. I look at what you are today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Other people may remember, they may be even pointing a finger at your way, your way, you know. They may talk about you behind your back. Or if you haven't got used to it, get used to it, they will anyway. It's when they get in your face, that's bad. <laughs> but you know what? God has taken all that away. Jabez, somebody talk to him about God. Somebody talk to him about the Lord and what God could do for him. You don't have to live up to your name, sorrow. You don't have to look up to it, Jabez, and look at it. I want you to look at it again. This is what's so amazing to me is that out of all the writings here, out of all the names that appear, there's one guy, one guy that it talks about and gives a description about what happened to him. Look at that again. Will you do it? Look at that 10th verse again. And it says, Jabez called on the God of Israel. And he, you know what he asked him to do? I want you to do it. Say, God. Say, God of Israel. Look at me. <laughs> Say, bless me again. And lift your hand now and thank him for the blessing because the blessing is coming. Come on, lift your hand. Lift your hands by faith. I dare you to lift your hand. I dare you to lift your hand and say things are going to get better and better and better and better and better. I dare, dare you to do it. I dare you to say it. Come on, you can shout me down. I don't care. I'll listen. Come on, say, I dare to be better. I dare to be better. Say, it's going to be better. Hmm. Who said that? I like that. Do it again. I don't know who you are, but I'm glad you're here this morning. Who is this? What? Myrna? Do I know you? Never met you? Long, long time ago. Well, hey, you're doing, sounds to me like you're doing real good. Glory. Well, I tell you what, God's a big God. He's big, bigger than you can ever dream of, folks. And he can go beyond anything you can dream because he's God. He's God. He's God. Look around at the creation here. Oh, I know there's a lot of people, and they're, they're, they're so highly intelligent. They really are, but they don't believe in God. You know why they don't believe in God? They never had an encounter with God. They have never had an encounter with God. You know what? I, if I had one, I don't think I've got one. Oh, yeah, this comes to me. You can call it spirit or whatever, but I don't care. I'm going to do it anyway. I don't get scared now. I, don't, I won't do anything real weird. don't think I will. Barbara, help me so I won't do anything weird. Hmm? I've depended you all my life to keep me straight. You know, I won't do anything weird. I'm taking this paper clip. Barbara. Ron's looking at me. 
back there. He's wondering what I'm going to do, too. Now, if I take this wire right here, there's a plug-in here, electrical plug-in. Now, if I take this wire, if I take this wire, you hold your breath? Are you holding your breath? If I take this wire, is it okay, do it, Barb? <laughs> if I take this wire and put it right in that, you know what? I'm going to feel something come out of that thing through this wire into my body. Now, you know I'm crazy, but I'm not that crazy. I'm not going to do that. But you see, when you... Before, because the Lord said, call unto me and I'll hear and answer you. And I'll show you some great and mighty things which you don't know. God said, I'll, if you'll just believe me, if you'll just say, I believe God. I tell you, I believe I can preach all day on this. If I believe God, and if you say that with all your heart, and it comes out of your heart into your being, I want you to know God will do some things for you that will be amazing. He can turn everything around for the good. You say, everything's been going backwards. Everything, hey, talk about what? Everybody's, I mean, everything's been going haywire for me. You ever heard that expression? Things have been going bad for me. Instead of going forward, I've been going in reverse. It's time to make a change. I dare you to say, I believe God who said I'll do exceeding ab abundantly above all that you're able to ask or think. I'll go beyond anything that you could even dream of. What can you dream of? I've got, I, I got some big dreams. I've got some things that I'm dreaming about. You say, but pastor, what about, you know, you're getting a little older. Hey, I want you to tell me, I want to tell you something. I've got more power inside of me, the power of the Holy Spirit. When I come in here, I feel like I was 27 years old. I feel like I can preach just like I did when I was 27 years old. You know why? Because it's the anointing of God, the power of God that's on the inside of me. I dare God. I do. I say, dare, I dare you, God, that bless me today. I dare you to pour it on me today. I dare you to fill my container so full that it'll splash over on everybody else and they'll walk out of here saying, I can do it. 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 Say it with me. Say, I can do it. 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 Some of you want to own your own business. It's about time. Hey, you say, well, Pastor, I'm so, so, and so, and so. I'm this age. I'm that age. Hey, you stop being that way. You just look up to God and say, God, what would you have me do? What would you have me do that would be a blessing to, to me and to my family and to my church? What can I do, Lord? What can I do? I want, I want you to know God will drop an idea into your heart. He'll drop something into your heart. Somebody will come across your path that will need what you've got, and they'll call on you, and that will be the beginning of something that will grow into something bigger because you are daring to believe God. You're not going to give up. You're not going to throw in the towel. You're just beginning to live. I said you're just beginning to live. You're just beginning to live. Isn't God good? Isn't he good? Isn't he big? Isn't he wonderful? Somebody had to witness to Jabez. That's where you come in. You need to witness every opportunity. Now, I know you could be a I mean, th there are some people that they don't use wisdom. They just walk up to people, you know, and, and they, they just, you know, tell them what they ought to do. They're going to go to hell if you don't change your way of living. But that isn't what God called you to do. He said, be a witness to me. Be a witness to me. And he's saying, be a witness of me. And when you walk up to people, you, you know, there may be people in trouble that you'll meet before the day's over. And they may even tell you some of their trouble. You may not even know them, and they, they, you start talking with them, have a little conversation. It won't be long, they'll say, well, I'm really having this trouble. I'm having this trouble in my body, or I'm having trouble in my family. Or they'll, they'll just, you know what, that gives you an open door. And you know you can always say this, I dare you to believe God. I, that's what my thought is. This I dare you to believe God. Just say, can, can, can I, do you mind if I pray for you? You know, I've never had anybody. I've I only had one man. He was dying in the hospital and I went to see him. I'll never forget it. He never came to church. His wife told me he was in the hospital. And I said, I'm going to go and see him. She said, well, I don't know. I said, well, if you don't mind, I'll go see him. She said, well, you can try. I went in. I talked to that man a while. talked to him about the Lord and the love of God. And he looked up at me. And, I, and it's the only one ever done that, but I'll never forget it. I said, do you mind that I pray for you? That the Lord will come into your heart and forgive you of all of your sins and take them all away. He looked up at me and said, no, it wouldn't do any good. It wouldn't do any good. 
when I went down the hall, I prayed for him. But you see, he had to do something. He had to dare to believe God. And either he was an infidel and believed God. It's the only time it ever happened in my life. But it's branded on my mind. It's burned into my brain. That one man could have went into heaven if he had only listened and let me share. Because I've shared with people that are dying. Share Jesus with them. And I've seen God change their lives completely before they left this world. But they dared. They dared to believe that God would hear and answer their prayer and wash away their sins in the blood of Jesus. I want to tell you something. I'm daring you. Somebody witnessed to, to Jabez. Somebody had to because he heard of the God of Israel. He heard of that. And so Jabez, this one little scripture here, two scriptures, two, out of all the other stuff that's in here in the book of Chronicles, First Chronicles. And it says that Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bear him in sorrow. He lived under that all the time. It, 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 when, I, when I looked again yesterday, and I thought, you know, it looks to me like there's something wrong there. If It looks to me like they should have put the 10th verse and made it the 9th verse, and the 9th verse made it the 10th verse. Because it says, it starts out by, Jabez was more honorable than his brother. If they would... You know, I thought, well, you know, but, you know, I wasn't the writer. I said, it just looked like it ought to be that way to me. But you know what? His name meant sorrow, meant trouble, it meant disappointment, it meant distraction. It meant everything that was bad was wrapped up in the name Jabez. But then you know what he did? He did something, didn't he? Oh, that thou wouldst bless me. He called he called on the God of Israel. Everybody say he called on the God of Israel. Saying, oh, that thou wouldst bless me indeed. Enlarge my coast. Enlarge my territory. Make my territory bigger. Now, that's what John and Debbie's getting ready to do. They're going to make the territory bigger. They're going to put on a house there. And they're gonna, hey, God's going to bless them. And he says, enlarge my coast. Enlarge my territory. That thine hand might be with me and that thou wouldest keep me from evil. I don't want to sin and make a, make a mess of my life. God, I want you to help me. That it may not grieve me. I don't want to be grieved over evil that I've done. And God granted him that which he requested. Can you say amen to that? Because he dared to believe God. Stand with me. He dared to believe God. He dared to believe it. Didn't matter what others were doing. Didn't matter what others were saying. He dared to believe God. Sit down. I got something else I want to tell you. Thank you for being obedient. <laughs> I'm going to tell this last thing because it comes to my mind real vividly and clear. So therefore, I want to obey the Lord important that I tell you. Barbara and I got a call one day from my lady and said, uh, would you meet me and, and, and I've got some things I want to tell you. And we said, okay, we would. So made the appointment at the church. We met her at the church. And she came in and sat down with us and began talking. As soon as she sat down, the tears just began to roll. I mean, tears just flowed from her. She was just so broken. She was a man, a woman probably in maybe late 40s or something like that maybe early 50. And she just, uh, I double-checked with Barbara to make sure my story was straight uh, this morning. But she sat down and began to talk to us, and the tears just rolled from her cheeks. And she said, I can't sleep at night. I've had so much difficulty, so much problems. My days are terrible. And she went on and on, just kind of telling us what kind of a life that she'd been living and how terrible things had been for her. And she said, the thing that's bothering me the most and I wake up at night. When a dude goes off to sleep, I'll wake up, and all I can hear 
All I can hear is this baby crying. And we just let her talk because we saw she was just so broken she needed to get this out. And finally she said, I had an abortion. And because that I had that abortion, killed that child, she said, it has been on my mind night and day ever since then. And she said, I can't get away from it. It's tormenting me. And you could see it in her face. She was a tormented woman. I mean, her eyes were hollow. She had gone through it. She'd gone through it. We went through some scriptures with her, as I remember, and we prayed for her. And we, we commanded that that enemy come out of her. We commanded that, that that enemy that was tormenting her would come out of her. We, we, we went through the scriptures. God has forgiven you. God doesn't remember it anymore. I'll tell you what, folks, that will open the door many times to the hearts of people when you say, look, if you ask God to forgive you of it, you'll never remember it anymore. It'll open a door you can walk through. And we prayed with her. That tormenting thing left her, and she was completely relaxed. When she left, she was a different. We didn't do it. God did it. But I dared her to believe God. I said, if you'll believe God, he can take that away once and for all. And he'll never come back again. Because if that thing ever comes back to torment you, all you have to say is, look, I, I want to tell you something, you old enemy. I want to tell you something. God has forgiven me of that. He never remembers it anymore. It's gone forever. And it's all over with. I am cleared. I am cleared. I am free. I am free to walk out of here and know that everything's going to be all right. That woman was never the same. God delivered her. Everybody say amen to that. She dared to believe God. And that's what it takes. Daring to believe God. Now you can stand. Hallelujah. Clap your hands unto the Lord and praise him for the word I just read to you. The word of God. You're not clapping your hands for me. You're clapping your hands for the word of God. Thank God for the word. Thank God for the word. Be a Jabez. Be a Jabez. Say, I'm not going to take it just as it is. Hallelujah. I'm going to believe God for the very best. Glory. Glory, glory. Everybody shout glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If there's anybody here and you need prayer this morning, I want you to come. I mean that. Any kind of prayer you need, I want you to just come stand here. We're going to pray over you. We're going to pray over you. Right now. Anybody here? Anybody here that needs prayer? It, did the sermon do that much to you? <laughs> All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jill will always come for prayer. <laughs> I know, it's, I'm not trying to miss you. But you know what? And, and I know she has some needs, and God will take care of that. Say, God will take care of that. Because she believes God. You dare to believe him, don't you? That's why you come. You know what? When you stepped out and came here, you came here by faith. You know what? Really, it wouldn't even be necessary for me to pray for you, so we're just going to bless you because you walked out of here by faith. It's yours. So you walk back and you say, hey, I've got it. I've got it made. Say, I've got it made. Say, if I dare to believe God. Come on, say it with me. Say, if I dare to believe God, I've got it made. All right, I've got it made. Thank you, Father, right now. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for the anointing of God. Let it go through her. Hallelujah. I thank you for the answer that she's praying for right now. I thank you, Lord, as she, as she launches out and does that which you've told her to do. It will be blessed of you because that's what you do when we call upon you. Father, I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, let everybody say amen. God bless you. Go, go with it. Go with it. Go with it. Go with it. Hallelujah. Somebody else needs prayer. Good Lord. All right. All right. God bless you. You know what you need, so I won't even ask you what you need, but you just believe God for it right now. Hallelujah. You must have, you must have been, how come you to come here today? Because I ran into Reba. I haven't seen her very much in so long where I had time to talk, and we got to talking, and she told me we had a new church, and I thought, well, we've been looking for one, and we thought we'd try it out, and I knew the Lord would send me to the right church, and by golly, I think he has. <laughs> it's dangerous to run into Reba. <laughs> All right, hallelujah. Well, let's just pray over her. And whatever her need is this morning, God will give her that need. Let the anointing of the Lord. Just, just uh, face, uh, yeah, that's right, put your hand up here. That's good. That's good. Father, hallelujah. Oh, I feel the anointing of the Lord. It's strong on her right now. I thank you for it right now, Lord. I thank you for it right now. I praise you for what you're doing in her life. I thank you, Lord, for turning it around. I thank you for turning it. Everybody say, turning it around. He's turning it around for you right now. What's your name again? Myrna. Okay, Myrna. We'll remember that. Grady's wife used to be Myrna. Okay, I got it. I got it. Thank you, Father. Right now, we praise you for it. We thank you for answering prayer in her life. Lord, you do some things in her life. Do some things in her life. If she's done anything wrong, forgive her right now. If you've done anything, say, God, forgive me. 
Forgive me. That's right. Hallelujah. He does. He'll never remember it anymore. He washes away with the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You walk with God. Now, listen, I'm giving you a word. You walk with God. You don't just come here and there and yonder. You find a place. You anchor yourself in that church. Be in there to do everything you can for that church. And you witness when you get an opportunity. You witness outside of the church. You do it, and God will bless you, and your needs will be taken care of. And everybody say in Jesus' name, amen. It's done. Ah, hallelujah. You pray now, Bahasai. Yes, I like that. I like that. Glory. Glory. Come on up. Oh, this is a... You know what? This couple here got married. Hallelujah. Everybody shout hallelujah. Glory to God. And I'll tell you what, I, I, I love Matt. I've known him since he's a little old boy. And Desiree, I haven't known her that long, but I've known her for quite a while. Well, you, you did you come over to New Life when we were there? I can't remember. No, okay. But I've known her and her mother for, well, I don't know, 12, 14 years, something like that. But anyway, they stand here today. And you know what? Uh, as I said, they got married. And uh, I, I'll tell you what. We ought to give him another hand. Just give him another hand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And um, God is going to bless you. God's going to use you. Believe me, I'm not just saying this to build you up, but God's going to use you, and you're going to witness to other people, and you're going to do some work for God. You hear me? You're going to do some work for God. God loves both of you. He loves you so much. And we're so glad that you're standing here today before God, and we're going to pray, and people are going to lift their hands out in this direction. Lord, Larry and Reba, come stand with them. Will you do that? Just come stand here with them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. And Reba and Larry are proud. They're proud for Matt. They're proud for Desiree. They're proud for these two, two children that came in the package, too, here. And, and they're sweet. And I'll tell you, Christian and Maria. No, Maria? I got it right, didn't I? And they're cute kids. And, and we need some kids in this church. We need a lot of kids in this church. I want, I want young people to come with good kids, you know, and bring kids. And all these young people get married and want them to have kids. Bring them to church. Get under the anointing of God. Get under the faucet where, the, you know, where the power and the presence uh, flows out. Lord, we thank you right now. We thank you for them as they stand here today. Lord, I thank you for Desiree. I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for Matt. I thank you for what you're doing in his life. Lord, and right now, I, I know if you already, you've already given your heart to God. You've already given your heart to God. And you have two, Desiree. You've given your hearts to God. All right, and remember that. You've surrendered to him. And you know what? God's presence and power, and you need to hold the spirit of God in here. You need to speak with tongues and magnify God, and you will receive that. You will receive that. If you haven't, you will too. You hear? You're going to receive that. In the name of Jesus Christ, God's going to do mighty things for you and through you and by you. And, and, and believe me, your tomorrow's going to be brighter than today. That doesn't mean you're not going to have some problems and difficulties you'll have to face. That's life. Everybody say, that's life. Hey, you have that. You have some difficulties and things to face and go through, but God is with you all the way through. And, and lean on him. Lean heavy on God. And if God doesn't okay it, don't do it. But if God okays it, it's all right. But lean heavy on God. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, you said, if you seek me, you will find me. And if you call upon me, I will answer you. I will be with you. I will take you where you should go. I know you. I know who you are. I know your past, your present, and I also know your future. Therefore, look to me and watch what happens for the good in your life. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That's it. That's a word. Take it with you. Everybody say praise the Lord for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. And I'll tell you what. If you didn't know they got married, be sure to tell them. Say, I'm glad you got married. We're just happy for you. Huh? Do that. Do that today. We're happy for you. We're happy for you. I dismiss you in the name of the Lord, and I command you to come back next Sunday morning. And listen to me. Tell somebody to come to this church. Tell somebody. Witness to somebody and tell them to come to this church. Will you do it? All right. I'm believing you'll do it. Be a witness. God bless you richly. It's been a, I think it's been a good meeting. Huh? Did pretty good. Leave my notes at home, right? All right. God bless you. God bless you.